ಓಂ ಜ್ಞಾನತಿಂಜನಶಲಾಕೆಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರುನ್ಮೀಲಿ ಯೇನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ನಮ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾದ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪ್ರೇಷ್ಠಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನ್ನಿತಿ ನಾಮಿನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತೆ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶತಾರಿಣೆ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸದಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಟುಡೇ ಆನ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಅ ನ್ಯೂ ಸೀರೀಸ್ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ದಿ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತ so far we had uh, uh, just to see in the basic uh, chapter summaries but now we will go into some details so the first topic is about the soul this is the most important topic in the entire vedic literature and uh, the bhagavad gita best explains this subject matter of soul so in the bhagavad gita uh, the most important verse about the soul is the 13th verse of the second chapter the verse is dehi nosmin yatha dehe kaumaram yauvanam jara ತಥಾ ದೇಹಾಂತರ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ತಿರ್ ಧೀರಸ್ತತ್ರ ಮುಖ್ಯತಿ ದ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಸ್ ಅ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಆಸ್ ದಿ ಎಂಬಾಡಿಡ್ ಸೋಲ್ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂಲಿ ಪಾಸಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಬಾಯ್ಹುಡ್ ಟು ಯೂತ್ ಟು ಓಲ್ಡ್ ಏಜ್ ದ ಸೋಲ್ ಸಿಮಿಲರ್ಲಿ ಪಾಸಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಅನದರ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಆಟ್ ಡೆತ್ the self realized soul is not bewildered by such a change the important words here in this verse which have a lot of meaning so the one of the important words is dhira ಧೀರಸ್ತತ್ರ ಮುಖ್ಯತಿ ಧೀರ ಹೂಸ್ ಅ ಧೀರ ಧೀರ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದ ವೈಸ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಧೀರ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಒನ್ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ಅನ್ಡಿಸ್ಟರ್ಬ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಅವರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟರ್ಬೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಡ್ಯೂ ಟು ಇಗ್ನೋರೆನ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಸಪೋಸಿಂಗ್ ಯು ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಗೋ ಸಮ್ವೇರ್ and it happened to shrila prabhupad that when he first went to america he uh, landed in new york and from new york he had to go to the a, a smaller place a smaller town away from new york by a bus so he was to be dispatched to that small town called butler by bus so he went to the bus station but because he was new prabhupad was new to america he did not know so much about uh, the systems there still he was uh, being helped by an agent of the host shri prabhupada is still he still i was very much disturbed condition how to get on to the bus how to take a ticket etc etc so disturbance of the mind is due to ignorance our mind in the material condition is always disturbed this is explained in the bhagavatam very nicely ಸದಾ ಸಮುದ್ವಿಘ್ನ ಧಿಯಾಂ ಅಸದ್ಗ್ರಹಾತ್ ವೈ ಇಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟರ್ಬ್ 
it is because of our unfavorable condition we are actually spirit but we have been put into material condition so therefore we all can experience or have got some experience if we are in an unfavorable situation we are very disturbed just like prabhupada again gives another example when he was uh, traveling from india to america by a cargo ship so when he was passing through the sea on the ship although the ship most of the time is very uh, safe but sometimes there is a storm so when there is a storm then the ship starts tossing and then the passengers on board the ship they become very disturbed because that situation is foreign to the people on board the ship everyone is generally used to staying on the land but in the ocean constantly there are waves and sometimes due to storm the ship starts shaking very too much so in that position uh, one becomes very disturbed in the mind because our natural condition is not to be in the ocean our natural condition is to be on the land so on the land we are not disturbed like that but on the ocean we become very disturbed it is an our unnatural condition if we are not in an unnatural situation then there is no question of disturbance so dehinaha means one who has accepted deha or material body i am within this body each one of us we are within the particular body now we should understand i am not this body just like a gentleman he is within his shirt and coat similarly we should understand the actual person the spirit soul is within the body and the mind two coverings we are actually spirit soul but we are covered by two coverings what are the two coverings the inner covering is the covering of the mind and the outer covering is the covering of the body this gross body this gross body actually to understand better why uh, this is being explained this gross body is made up of five elements earth water fire air and ether and we can understand in this planet which is called the earth planet the earth is earth element is very prominent even though the material body the gross body this body external body is made up of five elements these five elements are like five ingredients for this body to give an example if there is a building the building is basically made of earth water and fire how is that people takes some earth clay and they mix it with water and then it is made into a shape of a brick and that brick is put into fire then when the brick is nicely baked it is strong then it is removed from the fire and it is ready for being used to set into a big building so basically the building is nothing but earth water and fire 
Similarly, our body is not just three elements, but earth, water, fire, air, and ether. Just like we are breathing, we are breathing air. So there is air within this body. Then there is the outer skin, which is earth. Then there is heat in the uh, stomach. That's called the fire of digestion. So the fire element is there. If the heat is not sufficient or the fire is not proper, then we cannot digest the food we eat. So like this, the uh, five elements is what this body is made of. But among all these five elements, the earth element is very prominent, especially for those living on the earth planet. But there are other planets, just like the sun planet. There, sun planet, the fire element is very prominent. So there, the bodies are made of fire. And there are aquatics in the ocean. So those aquatics, their body is mainly made of water. If those aquatics who are very comfortably nicely situated in the ocean, if they are removed from the ocean and brought to the land, then immediately they will die. So they cannot live on the land as much as we cannot live in the water. So similarly, uh, our situation should be as spirit soul. We should not be in this material atmosphere. So, uh, the material atmosphere is the foreign atmosphere. Now, this material atmosphere itself, we to understand basically because of this body. Uh, the body, the gross body made up of five material elements. These material elements, even though uh, we may not technically understand what these elements are, but we can perceive just like uh, there is the uh, touch sensation by which anything which is earthly element we can feel, perceive. Then water has got taste. Uh, we can perceive the light of a fire or the heat of a fire. We can smell the air, aroma, air carries aroma. We can feel the space or the sky. Like that, we can perceive these elements even though directly we cannot always uh, see the elements. Similarly, there is one inner body made up of mind, intelligence and ego. This inner body, uh, there are three elements, mind, intelligence and ego. Now these are finer than the five gross elements. We cannot see, smell, touch or, uh, um, or hear these uh, three elements, mind, intelligence and ego. We all know you have a mind, I have a mind. I have intelligence or you have intelligence, but we cannot perceive these things the way we perceive the gross elements. Similarly, ego also, mind and intelligence, we have some idea, yes, mind is a seat of emotions and intelligence is the, is the one that gives us direction, discrimination capacity, learning ability, ability to uh, acquire knowledge, yes. But then what is this ego? This ego is everyone has their individuality. Just like I am a man, I am Indian, I am intelligent. Uh, like this, this uh, conception is called ego. So the ego is there but we cannot see it. So they are very fine things, this mind, intelligence and ego. So, it is explained that 
just like these three subtle elements finer elements mind intelligence ego is finer than the gross five elements the soul is even finer than the mind intelligence and ego it is actually the finest the soul is the finest so therefore there is no question of perceiving the soul either through our gross senses or through our mind or intelligence or ego we cannot perceive the soul at all by these so uh, it is explained that uh, these eight elements earth water fire air ether mind intelligence and ego they are described as the energy one energy of krishna the supreme lord and we can ex uh, we can experience the presence of the lord in his uh, by his different energies the example is given just like fire is situated in one place but it spreads heat and light uh, over a much much bigger area similarly the supreme lord is situated in his uh, personal abode but his energy is spread everywhere throughout the material creation so the whole material creation is the energy of the supreme lord krishna so those who don't have this understanding that ultimately everything which is matter or material is simply a combination of the different elements of the material energy they simply go by what they are able to perceive or what they are able to see or what they are able to experience in a gross way or even maybe subtle way but they don't consider that inside this body there is a spirit soul they have no vision to see the spirit soul neither they are able to understand this how this body is working they have no clear conception uh the the scriptures say that actually uh what is moving this body it is actually the real living force within the body that is moving this body so long this living force which is the soul the spirit soul is there in the body the body is working as soon as the spirit soul leaves the body we know what happens the body is no more working body it's a dead body so this is the most important point the difference between a living body and a dead body is that inside the living body there is a spirit soul and out without the spirit soul the living body becomes a dead body now for studying this cross body there is the uh, medical science for studying the mind they have some branch of uh, learning called psychology or psychiatry but there is no branch to study the science of the soul which is actually moving the entire body and the mind itself uh, the soul is moving so somebody is thinking uh, i am the mind or somebody is thinking i am the body but actually they don't know we are neither the body nor the mind we are something within the body and mind we are actually the living force the 
the life force or the living force, the spirit soul, that they are unable to understand. Now this knowledge that we are spirit soul, each one of us, every living being, is being imparted in the Bhagavad Gita by the Supreme Lord Krishna, who is the supreme authority. So he is telling Dehi. Dehi no sminyatha Dehi. Dehi nam. Dehi naha. So Dehi means one who is the proprietor of the body. The soul, you, are proprietor of your body. So to understand the difference between the body and its proprietor, very simple way we can understand that I say this is my finger. I don't say I finger. My finger. My face. My hand. Correct? So why do I say my hand or my face or my finger? It is because I am the possessor of this finger, this face, this hand, this body, my body. So very clearly there is a difference between I and mine. So everybody understands my body or my possessions or my parts of the body, but nobody thinks when I say my body, who am that I? Who am I? That there is no knowledge, there is no inquiry, there is no understanding. Even people, so long in their body they are living, they are claiming this is my shirt, this is my house, this is my book, this is my, so many my. But when the person is dead, any more such claims are there? No, no more claims. So this human life is specially meant for understanding the I within. Who am I? Separate from the body, separate from the possession, separate from all the belongings. Who is this I? Now, if somebody doesn't know who am I, in the Shastras it is said, it is something like one is living like an animal. Uh, the example is given just like two dogs are fighting for some piece of bread. Now one dog is claiming this is mine. Another dog is telling, no, that's not yours, that's mine. They're fighting. But they have no understanding that claiming something is mine, they don't know who they are. They are simply concerned with that piece of bread, that's all, or their body, that's all. So human beings also, they claim this is my family, this is my community, or this is my nation, uh, or my house, or my possessions. But nobody is thinking, who am that I who am claiming? So in the school, college, university, there is no branch of knowledge which is teaching this most important uh, knowledge about who am I. So this Krishna consciousness movement started by Srila Prabhupada is specially meant for educating everyone about who is the I within the body. Everyone is engrossed with so many illusory things, but they have no knowledge of what is this I. So Krishna is giving this most important knowledge in the Bhagavad Gita that that I is within the body and that I is the spirit soul completely different from the body. A completely different from the body means there are two kinds of bodies. This is very important to understand. There is this body which we know as the body, yes, this gross body, external body. But there is also one internal body, one subtle body, uh, that is the, the mind, intelligence and ego. So most importantly, Krishna is telling 
this body which i say my body this body is changing this body is changing but i the person within the body the real person i i am not changing now how to understand this krishna is giving an example to help us understand this just like your body is changing and you experience the change from boyhood to youth to old age you know you were born as a very 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 small infant baby but the baby grows to become a child the child grows to become a boy boy grows to become a youth youth grows to become an old man so through all these changes there is that one person the same person is like i am an old person now i know i was a small boy i know i was a youth now i am an old man like that we know that the body is changing but i am the same person through these changes so just like a person is identified not by his dress but apart from the dress he is the person within the dress similarly this body and mind also is like a dress this body and mind is also like the dress just like this dress if it becomes old and worn out then you discard this dress and accept a new dress similarly krishna is telling dehantara at the time of death we quit this body we give up this body and we accept another body we enter another body so what is death death is also a change of body exactly like we are changing body from childhood to youth to old age similarly we change body at the time of death so accepting and understanding understanding and accepting i am not the body i am spirit soul different from the body and it's only the body which is changing i am not changing i am the same person through the changes of the body is the beginning of spiritual life is the most fundamental knowledge to begin understanding spiritual science so unless one is firmly convinced and has got a clear understanding i'm not this body i'm spirit soul one cannot progress in spiritual life it's not possible so the first lesson in the bhagavad gita is i'm not this body i am the spirit soul within this body and this has to be this has to be uh, understood properly uh, so within the body the soul is experiencing all kinds of changes all kinds of changes even the mind mind is changing uh, there's like different kinds of emotions different kinds of thoughts different kinds of feelings all within but you are the one who's experiencing just like you say my mind is disturbed my mind is filled with fear my mind is very peaceful so you are the soul the real person experiencing the different states of the mind you are experiencing different states of mind you are experiencing the different conditions of the body you experience even the outside atmosphere uh, in summer it's hot in winter it is cold in rainy season it is very wet and damp so you are experiencing you are the experiencer you are not the very body or the or the mind you are different from that this basic understanding is very very fundamental and this is not just a matter of hearing or just knowing but it's a matter of realization any questions are there yes okay we'll take some questions uh
what are the faculties of the soul that we are going to discuss in a answer this question in brief the soul is the fundamental experiencer you are the soul or i am the soul i am experiencing whatever is happening to the body whatever the body is going through whatever uh, is uh, uh, whatever is perceived through the body is like through the eyes i am seeing but it is not the eyes which is seen i am seeing i am using the eyes to see i am using the eyes to see i am not the uh, uh, eye neither the eyes are the seer i am the seer so like that the faculties of the soul have got everything to do with uh, knowing perceiving seeing the seer the hearer the person smelling is the soul not the body not the senses not the mind not the intelligence this is this is to be understood next question do i theoretically know i am the soul but practically i am constantly identifying with the body mind intelligence and ego and constantly catering to their needs so how do i stop and manage these requirements how do i prioritize the requirements of the soul now this is what spiritual life is all about one thing is to know i am not this body i am spirit soul and then how to realize my spiritual nature it is completely different from the material nature it's completely different from a spirit soul is different from matter spirit soul has got some wonderful qualities which we will discuss in uh, next few uh, uh, lectures or the discourses so the spirit soul's qualities are wonderful and the spirit soul is to be realized not exactly simply by studying some books but actually by hearing from the authority the authority ultimate authority is krishna and what krishna has uh, uh, spoken to arjuna that is explained further by shila prabhupada so by hearing from prabhupada by hearing from uh, krishna we can actually realize this knowledge that means we are able to see the reality realize means see the reality perceive the reality that i can clearly differentiate myself as separate from the body separate from the mind separate from the intelligence separate from everything that i am experiencing separate from all that separate from my positions i don't confuse uh, myself with my belongings no so that is very important because at the time of death what happens at the time of death actually i don't die or any person the spirit soul has no death the spirit soul doesn't die so what happens the spirit soul leaves one particular body and this leaving the body is uh, also change of body but it's a different kind of change than the normal uh, change that we experience when we are thinking i am growing up i am growing from childhood to youth i am growing old it's not like that the change at death change of body at death is not like that therefore it's called transmigration of the soul transmigration of the soul what is transmigration of the soul the soul is transferring i you any person at the time of death what happens we leave this body and we go to another body but how is it happening we are transferring ourselves from this body to another body but this transfer is a migration we were living in this body now we are going to live in another body a completely different body it's like when this body is changing 
more or less our residence does not change our place of residence doesn't change whereas when death happens then my place of residence completely changes completely changes so that's called transmigration of the soul so if we have to understand this transmigration of the soul at the time of death before death comes uh, we all experience that but uh, we have to understand and realize that there is no need to be afraid of death there is no need to become uh, fearful when i have to quit this body in fact we are forced to quit the body not that uh, we have a choice whether you want to leave or don't want to leave no we are forced to leave the body at the time of death so if you are prepared for it then there is no fear there is no uh, traumatic experience there is no confusion there is no um, uncertainty what's going to happen to me where am i going uh, how will i live all those kind of doubts and confusion everything is completely resolved when we understand and realize this uh, change of body at death called transmigration next question <clears throat> i am not this body but spirit soul in the big is a beginning lesson how do you practically realize that i am the soul that's exactly what we are going to discuss in the future this thing it is only possible by practicing spiritual life realization is only possible by spiritual life soul uh, is spiritual body is the real body of spirit soul how to attain yes spiritual body is the real body but how do we attain it there is no question of attaining it it's already we are that spiritual body only this material body we have is separate from us we have acquired this material body but uh, spiritual body there is no question of acquiring it is just that at the time of death or even before death comes if we can realize our self we can realize i am not the body i am spirit soul then we become situated in our spiritual uh, nature in our spiritual uh, we live in our spiritual body even now everyone is living in a spiritual body only but they have uh, wrongly identified they forgotten their spiritual form or their spiritual identity and they are thinking only in terms of this material body everyone everyone in this world who is in ignorance about the spirit soul about the spiritual reality they are identifying just like a child to give a simple example if a child is having a nice toy and is playing with a toy the child becomes attached to the toy and if the toy breaks the child start crying as if something has happened to the child itself but the parents know nothing has happened to the child if the toy is broken so what i'll get you another toy don't worry don't cry nothing has happened to you so like that one in knowledge is able to understand if something happens to the body nothing has really happened to me something has happened to my body so this body is also described as a dress in the bhagavad gita in a later verse in the same chapter second chapter so something happens to your dress it may be an inconvenience for you but you try to repair the dress and you continue to use it or you discard this dress and accept a new dress same way this body as long as it is uh, uh, it can be repaired if something happens to the body that's why we go to a doctor to get some treatment if there is some disease or some uh, injury or something but if the spirit soul is inside i am inside this body then something can be done but after the spirit soul leaves the body there is nothing that is possible to be done even by any doctor or by anybody so that's why we should uh, um, uh, realize our spiritual self then we are situated properly in our spiritual body or original spiritual body 
which is not different from us. It is not different from us, unlike this material body. This material body is different from us. So there's no question of attaining a spiritual body. It is just question of realizing the spiritual body by not identifying wrongly with this body, with this material body. So the process of this uh, realizing our spiritual form, our spiritual identity, our spiritual nature is the process of devotional service. So if somebody is engaged in devotional service, by practicing devotional service, by progressing in devotional service, our consciousness, that consciousness is our awareness of who we are. Right now, our awareness is I am this body or I am the mind. But that consciousness gets uh, corrected of this misunderstanding that I am the body or I am the mind. That purification of consciousness, when it happens, then you know who you are, you know what is your identity, you know about your spiritual form, everything. Then everything is perfect. That can happen even before we quit the body. And if somebody is situated in the spiritual consciousness about understanding that they are the spiritual nature, they are spiritual form, then they don't again take birth. They don't have to enter another material body after quitting this body. And even before quitting the body, they are situated in their spiritual uh, identity. That is the beauty of Krishna consciousness. So we'll discuss more in the next uh, 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 class. Now, tomorrow we are celebrating in our temple, Iskon Bangalore temple, we are celebrating Akshay Trutiya. So there will be a special uh, discourse on the occasion of Akshay Trutiya. So we will not have this uh, Bhagavad Gita uh, discourse. We will resume this discourse from day after tomorrow at the same time, 7.20 to 8 p.m. Thank you. Hare Krishna.